Sophia. Oh, can I answer? Yep. Um, x plus 9 plus 2x equals 9 newtons. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay, good. This is a right angle. I know it's a right angle only because it's marked as at a right angle, right? We can't assume that it is a right angle. So now I know that that's 90 degrees. So x plus 9 plus 2x equals 90, which means 3x plus 9 equals 90. 3x would equal 81, and x equals 27. But it wants a, b, c. So what do I do? 27 plus 9, which is? 36. 36. That's okay. You would have been way more careful on the test, right? Number five says, is it possible to draw a figure that contains exactly one pair of vertical angles and explain why? What do we think? What does one pair of vertical angles look like? So in doing so, have I only created one pair? No, I will always at least create the two pairs, right? So, and any wording on that is fine. When, when crossing the angles to create one pair of vertical angles, it will always create another. And explain like that? No. We don't have to explain the test. No. But will it be like draw? Mm, not drawing. A vertical angle. No, more like here's a picture, give me a pair of vertical angles. Or here's a picture, like name them. Like if it said one and two and three and four, oh, angle one and angle right? three, angle oh, okay. two and angle four. Okay. Wait, so why is it not? Because when you, when you draw one pair of vertical angles, it automatically makes a second pair. Okay. Kala. But on the homework, there was, like, vertical angles, but they had more radius. Yeah. Than so that's, like, no. So 16, okay? It says R2 and 5 vertical angles. If I take 2 and extend the, si extend the sides of 2... It would look like this. So this angle would be a vertical pair with this angle, and that's not what 5 is, right? 5 is bigger than that. So the only vertical angles in this diagram are 9 and 7 and 6 and 8 and 4 and 1. That one works too, okay? But 2 is not with 5, nor is 3 with 5. Yeah, but you can't. Unless it's literally drawn there already, you can't cut out part of it. Mars. I put seven, six, and seven, eight. For the linear pair or for the uh, vertical angles? Yeah. Linear pair, that's fine. I put, I put six and eight. For linear pair or for vertical angles? Linear no, pair. six and eight would have to be next to each other and form the line for a linear pair. All right, so I'm going to, this is literally recording right now. It's going to record the answers for the homework. This is the first page. Okay, 20 says two angles form a linear pair. The measure of one angle is one-third the measure of the other two. So linear pair means the same thing as 180, right? The measure of one angle is X. The other one is one-third of that, one-third of X. So X plus one-third X equals 180. If you want to keep them as fractions, this would be 1x plus 1 third x, or this would be 3 thirds. 4 thirds x equals 180. Multiply by 3. 4x equals 540. Divide by 4. And x is 135. And then the other one is 1 third that. And that's 45. So the measure of one angle, we don't know what it is. Give it the x. The measure of the other angle, they're going to give you some information about. Whether it's this one, one-third of it, one-half of it, two times it, five times it, ten more than it, that kind of thing. That's your second angle. And then figure out, is it a linear pair? That means it's 180. Is it complementary? That means it's 90. Is it supplementary? That means it's 182. Not 182, but 180 also. Kala. That's fine. You reversed it, but then the small you got the small you got the smaller of the two first. That's fine. As long as at the end you ask it asks for both, you give both. If it had said find the larger, you just have to know to make sure you plug it back in. Yep. So that's one x 
plus one third x, right? So if I'm combining these, one is the same thing as three thirds. And now you can add them. Or you can multiply by three and get rid of the, very, the denominator. That works too. Oh, so that's fine. This is the second page. 4 says the measure of one angle is three more than half the measure of its supplement. Okay? So one angle is the one we don't know. And then the other one is three more than half of it. So three more would be the plus. Half of the other one would be one half times x. These two together are supplements. So they combine to 180. So x plus one half x plus three equals 180. This is 34. So then I would, I would get rid of the fraction. I would multiply everything by 2. 2x two plus x plus 6 equals 360. 3x would equal 354 divided by 3. And x is 118. And then the other one is 1 half of 118 plus 3. And that's 62. So there, there is a word problem on your test similar to that. I don't think it's as, like, it's like a, you know, it could be double it or half of it. I mean, or twice it or four times it or f like that. So just figure out one you'd have no, no, no knowledge of. That's your X. And then the other one has whatever relationship it says. If it's three times it, then it's three X. If it's 30 more than it, then it's 30 plus X. And then is it a supplement or a complement? So you're either adding them together and setting them equal to 180 or you're adding them together and you're setting them equal to 90. The 118 I solved, and then I did, so that's the x. So then the other angle is 1 half x plus 3. So I did a half of 118, and then I added it to 3. Mm -hmm. Mike, what question was that? This is the third page. Your test is 15 questions. It is all open-ended. Some is vocab-based. Obviously, some's going to take some algebra skills. Some's going to be a diagram. You have to identify parts to it, okay? Some are naming things like we did with the quiz. So the quiz is something that's important to review, but also the chapter review that's on your assignment, okay? Wait. Yeah. We're going to have to, like, say that. No, not like give the definition of, but it could say a, a blank is this, and you have to fill in the blank with a point, okay? Or a line is this, and you'd have to fill in that, okay? And also, there's two always, sometimes, never questions mm -hmm. where it might say a line can blank be measured. Never. It can never be measured because it would always extend in both directions. It doesn't stop, right? A segment can blank be measured. Always. So that kind of stuff. Like it's always never based on some vocab. Okay. It could be, well, depends on the question. There's two. Yeah. So by definitions, and these are all on the Quizlet that I posted in the class. So remember, I told you yesterday to join that class. If you didn't, the link is on the homepage now. So if you go to the, it's on the module at the top with general, general information, but it's also on the homepage. There's a link directly to the Quizlet. You can join the class and in the class is a set of Vocab terms for chapter one, okay? And then that way you can study them as much as you want. So all of these were defined in the first section. Point, line, plane, segment, ray, intersection, coplanar, and collinear. You need to know all of these definitions, okay? So a point is, has no size, no thickness, right? It's represented by a single dot, and all geometric shapes are made from points. A line has length and extends in both directions. It's unending. It has one dimension. A plane is two-dimensional and, again, has no ending. It extends in all directions. No thickness, no ending, even though we use something that looks like it ends to describe it. A segment has two endpoints. A ray has one endpoint and one arrow. The intersection is where two things meet. Coplanar are three non-collinear points. And collinear are points that lie on the same line. A line can be named with the arrows over it, right? With two letters like line AB or 
line, and it would be a lowercase italicized letter like line L. A plane is three non-collinear points. So if I had a plane and this was A and this was B and this was C, I could call it ABC or usually this little, it's hard to read it, but it's usually on the outside. Or there could, might be an uppercase letter without a point in there and I could also call it plane M. I have a question. Yeah. Oh, I'll get there in a second. Okay. The segment has either the bar over it like AB or it just says AB, but that implies segment and a segment stops. So we said a segment can be measured. Can a segment be bisected? Can, yes. Can a line be bisected? Yeah. Nope. Well, How do you find the middle of something that doesn't end? I like that you're going to try to argue this. It can't happen. <laughs> a line never ends, right? So there's no way to find the middle of it. Segment is, uh, it just has two endpoints. So one is infinite. A line is infinite, and so is a ray, and so is a plane. Okay, the ray has one arrow and one endpoint, so like ray A, B. Wait, so can a plane be intersecting? It can be intersected. It can, I said bisected. Bi it can't be oh. bisected. Okay, intersection is where two things meet. These could be two lines. These could, these could be a plane and a line. These could be two planes. Okay. Coplanar means they lie on the same plane. Collinear means they lie on the same line. No, you need three points for it to be a plane. You don't need three points for it to be coplanar. It might ask you for three coplanar points, but it doesn't have to be. They just have to lie on the same plane. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, then came one, two, where we talked about congruent segments. So these are same length. And we talked about the segment addition postulate where if you have a segment that's divided up into three to two parts, we can add it together to get the whole. So you'll either see it where you're given two of those measurements and you gotta find the third, or you might be given something like this is x plus one and this is two x plus five and the total length is nine and you'd have to add those two together and set it equal to nine. So you wouldn't get both the lengths here and the overall length with that. You would just get the overall length. Questions on that one? All right, then came one three. And we talked about the midpoint we found the midpoint two ways. One was the definition of the midpoint, which was a point halfway between two endpoints. And we also, with given coordinates, found the coordinate point using the formula x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Yes. You know, I could have gotten a 95 if I didn't think it was x1 minus x2. Well, so now you you'll did, fix it you before did. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, like your quiz, remember we had two different questions. One where you got given the endpoints and it asked you to find the midpoint. And one where it gave you the midpoint and the endpoint and you had to find the other endpoint. Okay, your review, I think, does the both. But does the same. What's a segment bisector? Something that hits my, cuts my uh, segment into two congruent parts, right? So it could be a point, it could be a line, it could be a ray, it could be a plane, but it would cut it into two congruent parts. So you might see values like one side is three and it might ask you for the other side or the whole length, or you might see an algebraic expression there like x plus three 
and 2x plus 5, and you have to solve for x. So I would say x plus 3 equals 2x plus 5. This is a bad example because it ends up being oh, negative. Correct. Okay. Let's change this to negative. Otherwise, you get a negative, and you shouldn't get a negative. Um, I'm listening, Gabriel. Uh, uh, yeah, refill my water. Yep. Okay. All right, then came the distance formula as not to be confused with the midpoint formula. Right, Mars? Yeah. Okay, distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And we used the distance formula a bunch. Huh? I thought this was x2 plus. Okay, so you switched them. Now switch them back to where they're right. So we find length this way. We use this to determine if, if segments were congruent. We can use this to determine the lengths of the sides if we're trying to find the perimeter or the area. Okay. You can see this used a lot of different ways. In 1, 3, this is where we started plotting points on a coordinate grid and then finding if, they're, uh, if they were congruent, okay? We were talking about polygons. So we started with classifying and naming a polygon. Remember that if we're saying it's a polygon, there's no open spots. No, it might just say, is this a polygon? Oh, okay. And if it is, classify it. It can't have any open sides. It can't have any curves. And each side has to intersect exactly two other sides at their endpoints. Yep. Yep. So it'll be classifying, name the polygon, identify if it's convex, con concave. So one. Yeah. Name the polygon, no sides like 3 to 12. And remember, we skip 11 because that would be an 11 gone. That's on the Quizlet if you need to practice that. Yeah. 12 is dodecagon. Dodecagon. Think decagon is 10, and we add two more letters to it. So it's dodecagon. Convex versus concave. Convex means that no side can be extended so that it goes inside. So something convex would not extend inside. Whereas concave almost looks like it has a little piece of it missing. Where if I extended the sides, it would go into the interior of your polygon. So it's like it's caved in. For the perimeter, we're going to add up all the sides. So this would go in conjunction with distance. Like you might have to use the distance formula to find the lengths of the sides and then find the perimeter and or find the area. So rectangle would be length times width or base times height. Triangle, one half base times height. That's pretty much it for the areas you need to know. The rest of them we'll get to later on in the year, but for now you need those. One five was all the angles. So this is like identifying an angle by name. Okay, so if this was A, this is B, this is C, I can call this angle B or angle A, B, C. The vertex is B. The sides are rays, ray B, A, and ray B, C. We classified the angle less than 90 is acute, equal to 90 is right, in between 90 and 180, so greater than 90, but 
less than 180 is obtuse and equal to 180 is straight. Greater than 90, but less than 180 is obtuse. The angle addition postulate said that if a point is in the interior of my angle, then A, B, D plus D, B, C equals A, B, C. So the sum of the two smaller angles is going to add up to give you the whole. So this one would work like your segment addition one, where you might be given the two parts and you have to add it up to get the whole, or you might be given the whole in one part, you have to find the other part. Or there could be an algebraic expression in there and you have to add the two expressions together to set it equal to the whole measure. What's an angle bisector? Okay, so it cuts that angle in half, right? Yeah. It's a ray, a ray that cuts the angle in half. It's not all in half. In half, yeah. So like if angle A, B, D equaled angle D, B, C, then B, D is the bisector. So this time they might give you one of the sides and you have to set it equal to the other side. Mm -hmm. Like if I gave you that this was 30 and I wanted the other one, I'd know it's 30. Oh. If I said that was 30 and this is X plus 10, I'd set those two equal to each other. Um, to get the whole? Nope, just to oh. get X. Oh, okay. It's not going to be that basic. Like it might be two expressions and you've set them equal to each other. All right, and then 1.6 was what we talked about yesterday and the beginning of today. Complementary two angles that sum to what? 90. Supplementary two angles that sum to 180. Adjacent share a side. Do not overlap. So angle one and angle two are adjacent next to each other. Share that side, but don't overlap. Linear pair form a straight angle. And it's a pair, so it's two of them. One and two are a linear pair. Isn't that the same thing as a supplementary angle? One and two are supplementary because they are a linear pair. Oh. But you don't have to be, they don't have to be next to each other to be supplementary. Oh. Right? Like I could have them completely unrelated. And as long as they add up to 180, they're still supplementary, but they're not a linear pair. And then the vertical angles make an X. So if I do this, this is where it gets confusing. The only pair of vertical angles here. Good. Yeah. Well, like in, a, in an angle bisector, I can give you two segments. You've got to set them equal to each other. Is that what you mean? Oh, the word problem? Yep. So why is five and three the only one? Because one does not have a vertical angle. If I extend the sides of one, it does this. 
So this would be vertical to this. Oh, but let's say that blue one was in there. Right, then it's fine. Then you've got whatever one and two would be together, N4. Okay. All right, I know that was fast, but obviously we lost time today. So questions on concepts. All right, so you have two things that you can do for review. One is the actual chapter test review that there's an assignment for that's from your book. It goes section by section. I will post the answers there so that you can just check them as you go. And then I also like had a quizzes that has multiple choice questions. So if you want to practice something interactive, I'll add that on there. I would do the book review before I do the quizzes review because obviously your test is not going to be multiple choice. Okay? Yeah. Can you do number 